Welcome back to The Art of Adventure. This is episode 154 with Emily Utter. The Art of Adventure is the podcast that helps you travel the world, run your business, and embark on an epic quest. I'm your host, lead explorer, and guide, Derek Loudermilk. You can head over to DerekLoudermilk.com to check out the show notes for this episode and sign up for the Art of Adventure email newsletter where you'll get my famous monthly reading recommendations. And if you are looking to start a business that you can take with you anywhere in the world, you can head to my coaching page and sign up for a free 30-minute strategy session with me. Interestingly, today on the podcast, Emily Utter is a coach for adventurous entrepreneurs and specifically healers, coaches, and consultants. And so we're going to get into uh, some of those ways that they can take their they, us, we, all of us coaches can take our business to six figures and beyond. So we'll talk about sales. We'll talk about how to structure coaching packages so that instead of having up and down income, you get regular income, how to think about uh, what skills you need to take your business to the next level and how to find extra conviction in the work that you're doing so that you can be even more authentic Emily is super high energy. You're going to love her. So without further ado, here is my good friend, Emily Utter. Welcome back to The Art of Adventure. I'm here today with my friend, Emily Utter. Welcome to the podcast, Emily. Thank you so much for having me, Derek. I'm stoked to be here. Yeah, this is it's great to reconnect with you because we initially met in Bali over some Whole Foods. Uh, and let's see, who was it? It was Bradley Morris that introduced us, I think. I think it was Bradley, yeah. Yeah, he's been on the show. He's got the great e-course adventure. And so one of the common themes here is adventure because you are a coach for adventurous entrepreneurs. Hell yes. <laughs> uh, what, what is an adventurous entrepreneur? Well, to me, an adventurous entrepreneur is someone who just wants to have a super kick-ass lifestyle, someone who loves to travel, someone who's really created their business and become an entrepreneur because they want adventure, because they want to be able to work from anywhere in the world with good Wi-Fi, of course. Um, and I just think adventurous entrepreneurs have a little bit of a different flavor. I'd say we're a little bit rebellious. We're a little bit alternative. We want to do things our way and we don't want the paradigms of the nine to five or the quote unquote real world to get in our way. I think we're pioneers and we're obviously awesome. Yeah. And, and so we met in Bali, you spend time in multiple locations and, Maybe you could just talk a little bit about how you live out that for yourself. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. There's so many different things I could say about this. So, yeah, this year I've been in Bali, Mexico, um, spent a lot of time in San Diego this year. My home base is technically San Francisco, though. To be honest, I haven't spent too much time there this year. So I've always got several international trips each year. And, you know, in terms of logistically how I make that work, Uh, I plan my whole business around being able to have this spaciousness. So the way that I do everything in my company is that I have um, one week kind of on and then a week off and then one week on and then a week off. And so um, the last week of each month is usually what I call my um, freedom week. It's my flexible week. So I don't see clients. Um, It's a great time to travel And so we also have some months of the year that have five weeks. And so in the five-week months, I always have the two last weeks of those months off. And that's when I go to Bali or Thailand or wherever I want to go because I'll have that bigger chunk of time where I don't have client responsibilities really. So I might be popping in our Facebook groups to support and answer questions, but I love doing that and that doesn't feel like work to me. So I just create a lot of spaciousness in the way that I do my scheduling. And that means, you know, if I am in Southeast Asia for a good period of time, like I was when I met you, it means I only have to have those crazy early mornings or late nights because of the time Uh. zone a few days while I'm gone. So for the entire trip, there's only maybe 
let's say four to six days where I would have to do that out of an entire month. So I just really work on keeping the work part of my schedule pretty tight and then I get to relax the rest of the time and, you know, work on stuff in my business but not be, you know, on the phone with clients all day every day. That's definitely not what my business looks like. You would have to be pretty efficient and doing the right things for the business when you are working to, to be able to have that schedule. So I, I'm assuming and you're saying no and, and not doing a lot of less important things. How do you decide you know, what you're going to spend your time on when you are working? That's a really good question. So part of what I didn't say, Derek, is that um, you know, because I'm three and a half years into my business now, I've had the opportunity to really scale. So uh, I have, you know, let's say 60 clients, but 50 of those are in a group. So I'm not getting on the phone individually with every single person that I work with. I actually have a team of coaches who support my mastermind clients, for example. So in terms of, you know, the workflow, there's definitely times of the year that are really, really busy. I'm in one of those busy times right now. So because my annual mastermind starts every January, it's really busy leading up to that program starting. But then for the rest of the year, it's really about just fulfilling. So being there for my clients, teaching, um, putting together trainings, webinars for my audience, for my community, um, you know, doing things like building my list. We've got a Facebook ads campaign going right now, really for the first time we, we're putting a big investment mm -hmm. in. Um, like you, I do my own interview series. That's another way that I build my mailing list. So there'll be different projects that I'm working on throughout the year. I don't want to make it sound like, you know, I hardly ever work because that's not true. Um, but I really have created my business in such a way where I'm definitely not grinding full time all year. There's definitely times of year where I can absolutely what I call coast on working, you know, pretty part time. Yeah. And I'd say in Bali, even my schedule is very light. The only thing I was focused on while I was there was, you know, handling my client calls, of course, and trainings that I do for my, my clients, team meetings, um, and a little bit of hiring. I was doing some interviews while I was there just because that's where I was at. I needed to hire a new mm. assistant. So, you know, I, for me, that's what's really worked because I'll, I can do these ebb and flows, these busy times. And if I chill and don't do much for too long, then I get bored and I lose my inspiration. <laughs> so I like to, you know, I like to always have something that's going on, but it doesn't have to be a really heavy sales period, for example, all year long, because that would be tiring and not fun. Yeah. And, you know, uh, with, with coaching, the idea of coaching, it's a, it's very tied to you spending time with someone, at, at least I think a lot of people think of it that way. And so you're, you're limited to the number of hours that you can actually spend with someone, but it sounds like you've got a, a mastermind group that, uh, allows you to do more with your time. And I, it was just wondering maybe about the transition between when you, you, you were starting to fill up your time with coaching and how did you move into uh, reaching more people? That's such a good question and I'm so glad you asked me that because I think a lot of people could listen to this interview and say, oh my gosh, I'm going to do a group program, but they don't have a mailing list, they haven't had a lot of clients, they're not good at sales yet, um, they don't even know what program they would do, they don't know what they would teach. So um, again, I think it's really important to kind of the first phrase that comes to mind is pay your dues. So mm -hmm. when I started my coaching company, I worked with one-on-one -on -one clients only. And I did that for probably the first year, year and a half or so. And I got really good at that. I got really good at getting my clients results. I got good at some of the other business skills. And then what I did and focused on in my second year of my business was really growing my mailing list. Um, so, you know, if you're wanting to do some kind of group experience, especially when you're selling at the high end, which is also what I recommend, um, you need to have an audience to sell to. So you can't just, I think a lot of people think you just have to have a pretty website. It's not true. I actually got to multiple six figures with what I call the ugliest website on the internet. I now have a beautiful <laughs> website, but I didn't have that when I hit my first real money. And I just really want new coaches to get that. Like, it's, it's probably not what you think. And the other thing that I see a lot that I think is unfortunate is I think that a lot of coaches are encouraged to sell at the low end. So let's say a $29 product or a $99 product. But even that, you would have to have a big audience to sell 
the volume of those to be able to live off of it. Mm -hmm. So I actually teach the model completely differently where I say, hey, Derek, focus on your one-on-one high-end clients, getting them into longer-term contracts, and then you can leverage out to a group after you've had the opportunity to build a following of, let's say, thousands of people, 3,000, 5,000, 10,000 people, because then you actually have people to sell to. But when you don't have people to sell to, you can't fill a group. So don't jump the gun is really my advice. Mm -hmm. It's actually get good at what you do. Um, And frankly, I think we all have to hone our craft. And so I don't think a brand new coach should be leading a group that size because you just need to get good at what you're doing. You need to become a better coach. The only way to get good is to do it. So coaching school is going to teach you a lot, but what's really going to teach you how to coach is being one. Yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting. You know, when we had a conversation, uh, when we met, you said, Oh, you should, you should raise your rates. And, and I did that and I was uncomfortable with it because I was uncomfortable with my own skill as a coach. Yeah. And, you know, 200 coaching sessions later, uh, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to, you know, provide some benefit. And so it's yeah. almost that just the practice uh, and the confidence in your own abilities to help someone uh, makes it much easier, you know, when it comes time to sign someone up for a high, high value. Yeah. Exactly. And you should never charge more than you're comfortable with because you won't be able to close. You won't be able to get someone to a yes because sales is so energetic. I mean, all of us have those stories of the used car salesman or the pushy demonstration of some weird product at the mall kiosk. You know, we all can think of uh, an instance or even, you know, for the ladies, you know, at a nice clothing boutique, the upsell, the constant upsell. We all have negative connotations with sales. Sales is really a lot about energy. And if you aren't feeling confident in what you're asking for, you're not going to be able to translate energetically that trust over to the potential client in order for them to want to give you their credit card. Yeah, let's let's talk a little bit about uh, sales because that's something that I know that you're you're passionate about. And recently, I had my my eyes opened by Donald Kelly, the sales evangelist, and he said, "If you have something that." can help people it's your moral moral responsibility to try to to get it in their hands so that you can help them yeah uh which which made it a lot easier for me i think there's still a part when when it comes time for someone to uh to commit financially they they in their minds whether it's buying clothes or hiring someone to help them as in a coach uh when it's time to to actually part with their money, there's always, I think, something that goes on in their heads, in, in my head as well. Like, okay, is this really what I want to be doing? Um, and so bridging that gap, maybe we can talk about bridging the gap when uh, both the potential coach and client both agree that it's a good idea to work together, um, making that happen. Okay, awesome. So are you talking about that moment where you tell them the price and they were totally a yes, and then they hear the price, and they kind of pull back a little bit? Or is there a different moment of transition that you're talking about? That's a good, let's talk about that one. That's a big one. Yeah, Yeah, that's a really big one. So, oh my gosh. So, I love what you shared that quote about, and I'm I'm not going to say it exactly right, but the whole point is that when we're selling something that we know can help somebody, we should really, really intend to make that sale because we're so devoted to helping the other person. Um, I talk about that with my clients all the time, that sales is really about being generous. So if you truly believe that, let's say you're a wellness coach, you know you can help this person, you know, get out of their pre-diabetic diagnosis, you've got to freaking help that person. If you're a love coach and you know you can help somebody find their soulmate, you need to help them. Um, for me, I meet broke people, people in debt, Um, but who have great talent, I know I can help them. I know I can get them out of debt. I know I can help them, you know, create a six figure, multi six figure company. I, it is my duty to help them. And so in that moment, here's what happens. Both you, the person selling and the potential client get uncomfortable. They're uncomfortable because they're going to have to be, you know, turning over probably thousands of dollars to you. Now you, as the person selling, 
especially when you're new, you're going to have a little bit of discomfort too. Because you're going to be like, well, shit, can I deliver the value? Mm. What if this person doesn't get the result? Oh, I'm feeling a little sleazy. I feel a little pushy asking for the credit card. So just know it, it is that moment where like, uh-oh, the stuff's coming up on both ends of the phone. Now, of course, you as the person selling, you can really grow your skills so that doesn't come up. Um, I would say there's, I mean, there's so many different things to say about, let's just use kind of a technical sales term, a money objection. So if somebody is really excited, but then the investment freaks them out, there's always something deeper going on. Because if they really believed that they would get the result that you're offering, and if they really, really want it, then there's no reason they wouldn't go figure out the money, even if they don't have it in the bank account, because they really want that thing. So that it means it's an indicator that something else is going on in the conversation and it's, it's happening at different levels. So one would be that you probably didn't get deep enough into the value in the conversation because Derek, even if I was going to hire you, if I didn't fully feel the value of what you were offering, then there's no way that I would pull out my credit card for you. And it doesn't matter if I had the money in the bank or not. Because if I don't see the value of making the investment, why would I make the investment? So that's one area in the sales conversation where you may not be, if you're getting a lot of money objections, you may not be connecting the dots enough about what you're offering and the value to that person. So when you're getting to that point when you're making the offer and telling them about your program or your services and you're connecting the dots for them, you have to do that really well. So let me show you what that looks mm, like. So yeah. Derek. If you and I were on the phone and you were considering my mastermind and you had some very specific goals, I know you're about to have a baby, um, maybe you had a very specific money goal around you having this baby and wanting to be an amazing dad and wanting to have free time to hang out with your kid, but then also being able to financially support your partner and your child. So when I went to make you the offer, I would need to really focus in on that when I'm explaining my mastermind to you. So I, as I would be walking through the bullet points of what you'd get in the program, I would always be connecting the dots for you. And what I teach my clients is this phrase, so that. So Derek, what we'll do in the program is I'll teach you how to have recurring income so that you always know what you're going to be able to contribute to your family, so that you're not worried about paying the bills month after month, so that you can start putting money away for a college fund or whatever things you told me are important to you. Maybe college fund doesn't matter. Maybe you guys want to buy a Euro van and go cross country doing a speaking tour. And so I would be speaking to that. So I need to be a really good listener to what you want. And then if I really believe I can help you, I've got to be connecting those dots for you when I'm making the offer. Because if I just lay out some bullet points to you that are super generic that I tell everybody, it's going to probably trigger you to have a money objection. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, I, I can I can see it. And it's even I'm like, yeah, I'm going to sign up right now <laughs> You know, because <laughs> that's pretty it's pretty amazing that you. Uh, hit on you guests probably some of the things that I am thinking about, you know, becoming a new dad and all that stuff. So yeah, so what I really want everyone to get who's listening, and you don't have to be a coach to learn from what I'm saying. What I really want you guys to hear is you have to connect the dots for people and it has to be based on their pain, which is what they have right now. So whatever thing is they don't have or what's bothering them. So the illness, the not having the partner, the not having the money, the not having adventure, whatever the current pain is, you need to connect exactly how your service or your product solves that problem for them. And you've got to connect the dots for people more than you realize. Because I'll tell you, you know, I see this happen a lot where a brand new entrepreneur thinks they know what they need, but it's not what they actually need. So you mm. have to be really good. So even, you know, let's say there was a health coach and, you know, it's not my expertise, but let's say they were helping someone overweight who needed to lose 40 pounds to get off their pre-diabetic diagnosis. The person who's overweight might think that all they needed to do was start exercising, whereas the health coach would say, actually, it's way more about the food. I don't know if that's true. I'm making that up. But the point is, is your potential client may think they need one thing when you actually know because of your expertise that they need another, you've got to be able to explain that to them mm. so that they get why you're making the recommendation that you're recommending. And if you don't feel like your service or your offering will actually solve their problem, then it's really your duty to not make the offer. 
So I'm not about selling every person I talk to. If I talk to somebody who's not a fit, I either send them away to someone who I think is, or I just say, I'm so sorry, I wish I had a resource for you and I don't. Um, I just know I'm not the coach for you. Hmm. So when you get out of that desperation, because desperate doesn't sell either, the more you can obsess about helping the other person, the better you're going to be at sales. It's just about being real with people. Like if I meet a coach who's only making $1,000 a month, I'm just real with them. I'm like, girl or dude, you know, come on. You have a skill, <laughs> you have a skills gap. That's all it is. You have a skills gap. And it's not that you're bad at coaching. You're horrible at business. So let me teach you business and you do what you're good at, which is coaching. So whatever it is that you're teaching and you see that gap for somebody, because you will. If you're talking to somebody and it's in your area of expertise, you will see that gap so obviously. And you'll be able to help them really, really authentically. Yeah, and I can see how this applies not to just coaching, but even anytime you have a product, uh, you're selling to a customer or to an investor or anything, and you can paint that so so that, you know, connected. Yes. Okay, I really like that. Hey guys, Derek here. I want to take a quick second to talk with you about starting a location independent business. This is something that is awesome. A lot of people are interested in it. You've probably been thinking about it for a while listening to this podcast and maybe you're ready to pull the trigger but don't know exactly where to start in terms of which business idea should I go with first or do I even have a profitable business idea. Maybe you're more concerned with the travel thing. You haven't traveled abroad before or you're wondering how to do long-term travel. There's a lot of things that are up in the air that you're wondering about how to move existing businesses online, how to do social media and marketing and networking, whether you should have a podcast or blog or video log in accompanying your business, there's a lot to consider. So this is where I might be able to help you because I've helped lots of aspiring digital nomads through personal coaching and business mentorship already get their businesses up and off the ground so they can travel the world full time if they want. So if you want to find out what I can help you with, I'm offering a free strategy session to listeners of The Art of Adventure. That's a 30 minute session. It's valued at 100 bucks. And we'll, in this session, dial in your real goals, what's getting in the way, and how to break through it. Awesome. This is a free session. All you need to do to claim your spot for 2017, get your year kicked off right is email me derek at dereklaudermilk.com or head over to our website to the coaching page and sign up there so but the easiest way just email me derek at dereklaudermilk.com and we'll chat a bit more about setting you up now back to the episode you were talking about when you can see a problem that maybe they can't even see or they think it's a different problem than they actually have mm-hmm. what what are some of the most common problems that you end up helping people with? Oh man, I could rant on this for a long time. Number (laughs) one is the freaking website. I just have to get my website really looking good. No, you don't. Cause I already just told you I, I, I was, if I wasn't at multiple six figures, I was like an inch away when I had the ugliest website on the internet. And I definitely hit my six figures with the ugliest website on the internet. Um, so stop worrying about that. Stop wor- I hate when people tell me, I don't have a business name. I don't care, neither do I. I mean, I really don't. I'm emilyutter.com is my website. My legal business name is Emily Utter International. And, you know, the Adventurous Entrepreneur is a brand that I use, right? But I don't really have a real business name, okay? So that logo I didn't have until I was making great money. Um, you know, branding, I didn't have any of that. But what I did do was actually tell people WTF I do because I meet people all the time who they have a business supposedly and they don't tell anybody. So honestly, it's so funny. Um, The way that I got my very first client was because I just decided to start introducing myself as a coach at networking events. And even though I never had a client before, I would just tell people I was a coach. And at first I said I was an intuitive coach, which is hilarious because I don't do intuitive readings. I mean, once in a while for a kick with a friend, you know, five minute reading or something. So that's what I first said. Um, My point in saying this is I didn't know what I was doing. So it's fine if you don't know. You figure it out as you go along. 
then I decided I was going to be a career coach. And that's actually what I started doing was career coaching. Then I realized, wow, how boring is that to send somebody back to a nine to five cubicle? And that's when I transitioned fully to doing the business coaching. Um, so the, the mistakes that I see people making are thinking they have to have all their ducks in a row. And it's actually like, no, I just want you to jump in the pool or I just want you to jump off the ledge, tell people what the heck you do. I mean, one of the first strategies I, I have my clients do is send an email to everyone they know telling them that they launched a coaching business and asking for help and referrals. It's called a warm letter. I've got a video and a blog on it. It's all for free online. And I could give you those links if you want, Derek. But literally, and my clients are like, oh, I got leads from my warm letter. I'm like, of course you did because you actually told people what you do. So a lot of us, we have our very first client sitting in our network already and we don't realize it because we're not telling anyone what we do. You can't just put a website on the internet. It's kind of like the if you build it, they won't come thing. You can't just have mm -hmm. a nice website. I'm sorry, it's not going to cut it. I have a beautiful, beautiful website now. And I, I mean, I maybe have one person who, maybe two, found me just from my website. So... Of all the money I make, if I made just one or two sales just from my website, that's not a lot. So my point is, it's not the place to focus. And yes, you need, you know, it's 2016. You need to have a website. But it can be basic. It can be Squarespace. Just get a nice picture, you know, and don't put too much information. Don't put your prices. Get on the phone with people and have a conversation with them. Yeah. Sorry, I, that was a big rant. I no, hope that was helpful. <laughs> that's great. And, it, and it, I was thinking about when I'm at some sort of event and there's a lot of people and someone says, oh, well, what do you do? First, I think, oh, that's an, don't like this question because it's lame. But then it gives you the chance to test out saying different things. And yes. so I'm always coming up with either something totally made up like I live off the land or, you know, something weird or I'll just – I'll pick one of the things that I do, you know, podcast host, author, speaker, whatever it is, to see which ones people are most interested in. Yeah. And funny enough, I think the best response is when I tell people I'm a storyteller. Oh, fine. And then they say, oh, tell me a story. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, here we go. <laughs> that's then they, great. they want something right there. <laughs> Good yeah, story. that's great. It's good to have an interesting thing to say. And by the way, I teach networking, so I'd love to share one of my favorite tips, if yes. that's cool. Yeah, let's okay. do it. Okay. So one of my favorite tips, because, yeah, it's so, it, we all go to the networking events. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Ah, it's so, you know, blah. <laughs> so one of my favorite questions to ask is, you know, there's, there's kind of two. Um, like, a, a why are you here? Why are you at this event? Um, but another twist of that is, what are you hoping to get out of this event? Because then you know, do they want to meet someone just for friends? Are they looking for a date? Um, are they looking for clients? Are they looking to hire? Are they looking for collaborators? Then you know their intention for being there. And everyone has an intention to be at a networking event, even if it's just for the free booze and pizza. So even if that was their agenda, Awesome. Now you know, and you can help them get it, get that by saying, well, the free food's over there, right? And nine times out of 10, you know, Derek, if I had met you at a networking event and I said, hey, why are you here? And you said, you know, I want to meet cool people who do adventure. And then you would ask me, Emily, why are you here? I would say, well, you know, I'm looking for coaches and healers who, you know, I've got a few spots in my coaching company right now. I'm looking for coaches and healers who want to make more money. And then that connection can be made because if you know somebody, then you might say, oh my gosh, I just met a girl over there. Or, you know, if I know somebody for you, or I just met this super cool mountain climber guy, I might introduce you. And that's how I got one of my biggest consulting clients ever, um, which was, I had an environmental consulting company before I started coaching. And I got one of my biggest clients ever from this guy at a networking event who when I told him about what I did, he said, oh, there's a guy over here you need to meet. He walked me over, and that client ended up being like a $3,000 a month client, which was a big part of my business at the time. Yeah. So, and, it, and I don't even know who this guy was who introduced me, but he was just being of service. So seriously, if, if, if you could just start obsessing about being generous and being of service, it will grow your company naturally. 
because you'll just be giving your gifts. I mean, that's even why I'm here right now with you, Derek, is because we got this chance to meet. Bradley introduced us. I shared generously with you some cool business ideas and now here we are. Now you're offering me an opportunity to share with your audience. You know, it's like the more that we can just be in that energy of helping everyone we come in contact with, even if just for two minutes, it just will grow your company. Okay. Here's, here's, um, so recently I've got this book launch going on and I'm asking a lot of people, uh, to support the campaign and pre-order the book so that we can get a publishing deal. And I feel like I'm asking a lot, you know, yeah. people, um, you know, I've, I've helpful throughout the year, but I feel almost like psychically I'm depleting, you know, I'm asking for all these things from people. Um, and it feels like I'm okay. I'm going to need to be generous next month. Um, when, how do you how do you feel when it's time to ask for help? Yeah, that's such a good question, and I can really relate to that because um, I like to be generous year round. And then the truth is, when I get really really busy, it's hard for me to find the time. Um, one of the things I'm doing right now because I'm going through a really intensive personal development training program, and one of the things we're being quite or not question, we're being encouraged to do is to stretch. So stretch beyond your current level of comfort with your ability to help others. So if that means that, let's say this week, you don't feel like you really have any time to help anybody else, why don't you stretch yourself to help someone for 15, 20 minutes? Because you actually expand your plate of your ability to help others. And, and the thing is, Derek, is if you are genuinely generous year round as much as you can, people are going to want to help you for your book launch and they're not going to feel like Derek is always a taker. So if you have an honest assessment of yourself that you're not a taker, that you are a giver as well, then I think you're in a good place. And then still you can always ask yourself because business is all about up leveling, right? Same with adventure lifestyle. We can always up level where we are is asking yourself, okay, what would be a little bit of a stretch? So if I was going to like poop around on Facebook for 20 minutes, you know, looking at pictures or Instagram, could I rather devote that time to somebody who might need my help? And the other thing I want to say about generosity is it doesn't have to be, it's nonlinear. So like I said, this guy at the networking event got me this client that over the years made me a ton of money, but I don't know who he is and I can't ever thank him because there's just it would be so hard to figure out who he was but i guarantee you because he's generous he's receiving mm -hmm. and when i'm generous i don't always get it back from the same person but i'm going to get it back somewhere else yeah i had a I had an interesting experience just yesterday actually where um a friend needed some help and i spent an hour um just working through stuff and when i got off the phone i had a bunch of sales come in the inbox Awesome. And I was like, how cool is look that? At, look at that. <laughs> it totally works. It totally works. Yeah. Uh, speaking of up leveling, what's something that you have learned and up leveled recently? Oh, man. That's such a perfect question for right now because uh, I'm going through this really intensive, months long leadership training program. Um, so, one of the things I'm really up leveling is even just how I show up as a coach and um, like becoming even more on fire about helping my clients. It, it's, it's crazy. Like, you know, this morning I was talking to a girl who wants to do my mastermind program um, and she was having some stress come up around the money and, and she needs to talk to her boyfriend about it again. And just my ability to just really like hear what was going on for her. I was like, I'm so busy and I don't really technically have the time to get on another call with her. And I'm just like, cool, let's talk again next week because I want to help you and your boyfriend feel really confident with you going forward with this conversation. So I'm expanding my own capacity of generosity. Um, there's so many things that are up leveling. I mean, everything is up leveling all the time. Um, my commitment to myself, uh, even one of the things I'm doing in my leadership program right now is they're having us up level even our outside appearance. So, you know, getting more regular like haircuts and 
mani pedis for the ladies and stuff like that. It's just like for all, even health and fitness, the food I prepare for myself, it's constantly, there's constantly places to look at to up level. And in terms of, you know, what's really up leveled for me, Derek, that's allowed me to grow. You know, I've grown relatively quickly. There's people that grow a lot faster than me, but I would say on average, I'm a pretty fast paced growth company. And what has allowed me to do that is that I'm constantly up leveling my belief system. So whereas I, you know, I come from an activist background, I'm from a very humble upbringing in Vermont. Um, I had to work through a lot of my money stuff and, and self worth Mm. to be able to receive the financial abundance that I now receive. So even that has been a huge up leveling. And sometimes I still feel like I'm catching up with myself because I never saw myself in this place of running a company at the revenue that I'm at, um, having a team, uh, traveling the world. I mean, it's weird because everyone sees me as this traveler, but four years ago, travel would give me panic attacks. Hmm. And now it's like, yeah, I get anxiety when I travel about this or that, especially when I don't plan and I don't know where I'm staying. You know, (laughs) I'm sure you've played that game like, oh, cool. I just arrived in Bali. Where, which hotel am I going to? Like, you know, I I like to play that game sometimes, but it's just, it's just amazing how when we really work on our belief system, so much more becomes possible for us. And I see that being one of the big areas for coaches and healers too, is they have a challenge receiving money because they think there's something wrong with receiving money, but money is energy and money is floating in the world anyway. So would you rather use it yourself and trust that you're going to do something good with it? Or would you rather go to the people who are like driving stretch Hummer limos and, you know, tearing up our environment? So those are all, I mean, I could go on and on. We could have a whole podcast just on up level. (laughs) What's, what's something that, you mentioned being on fire, but what's something that gets you fired up that you want to take a stand on? Yeah. That, I don't know, you'd be willing to, you know, I, we have this in America, we have this great like, protest movement culture. Like, what is your yeah. what is your thing that you want to take a stand on? Oh, it's so good. Okay, so the first thing that came to mind when you asked me the question of, I don't even know exactly how you worded it, but the very first thing that came to mind was, like, because you asked me what makes me on fire, so... I have a client who came to me in huge debt, huge money objections. Just she was like so hard to enroll in my program. Now she's kicking ass. She's traveling around the world. She was actually just in Bali. She's paying for her and her husband to travel the world. They basically got married and they're taking a year honeymoon around the world. I'm watching her on Instagram. I'm watching her on Facebook. And I'm like, holy shit, this is the girl who almost two years ago I talked to who was terrified to spend a very little amount of of what I was charging at the time to work with me. And now she's like kicking ass running around the world with her husband. So I'm so on fire about that. What I'm so on fire about is, and where I put a stake in the ground is I do not want to see coaches and healers that have these amazing gifts, struggling to take care of themselves, struggling to pay their bills, not being sourced, not being able to get massages, not being able to eat organic food, not being able to travel, um, and, and feeling like they have to give their gifts away for free because you don't have to. It is not spiritual to be broke. God did not put us or whatever you believe in on this earth to be broke and struggle. We were put on this earth to live our gifts. And if you have a gift that you can't get out there because you don't have the right skills, you have to get help. And that's what, that's, that's really my mission is like, it it just breaks my heart when I see coaches and healers who struggle to make money and they think it's because they're not a good healer or they think it's because they're not a good coach. And then they go get another certification or another training or Reiki level 27. And I'm like, you don't need Reiki level 27. You just need the the skills to back up your gift. So for me, I would be so freaking stoked to see people out there giving their gift. And not only that, that the people who need it step up to receive it. That the people who need it step up to make that investment in themselves. Because I feel like, you know, I don't know if I'm going on some woo-woo crazy town thing right now, but <laughs> I feel like the consciousness of the planet is rapidly transforming. The coaching industry is growing like crazy. Um, Reiki is a household word. People know what energy is. Um, There was just an article published that someone posted on Facebook 
that is now scientifically proving that we absorb energy from other people and that we can give energy to other people. So this substantiates the scientific proof of the healers out there doing their work. And so, I mean, I truly can imagine a world in our future where we are transformed, where we have received coaching, we have received healing, and we are freely giving our gifts and that we don't, I mean, the fact that we have a candidate running for president right now who is so full of hate and that that person is receiving votes is just a symbol of all of the problems that we have still in our country. And I believe that if people were healing on a really deep emotional level, we wouldn't see that. So Mm -hmm. I think, you know, when I start looking at the ripple effect of this work, it's huge. It's really huge. And it starts with us loving ourselves and taking care of ourselves and feeding ourselves first and putting that air mask on first. Like we have to take care of ourselves and you are not helping anyone by staying broke because you can't be fully of service when you're freaking broke. How can you concentrate on your clients when you're worried you're going to not be able to pay the bills? I love it. Got me fired up here. This is amazing. (laughs) Yes. Well, first of all, is there anything that I haven't asked you about that you think? Uh, oh man, I mean, I I think we should do this again because it's so <laughs> fun. Um, there's so much to say, and I think the main takeaways that I hope people get from this conversation is really be generous and be generous to yourself. Take care of yourself and take a freaking stand for the people that you're supposed to help. Because if you really, truly are devoted to helping people, then you owe it to them to get good at sales. You owe it to them to learn the business skills. You owe it to them to receive real money for what you're offering. Because people won't do do the work if they're not invested. It's funny, I have a client who, he's got two clients right now at two different rates. And he was telling us that the client who's paying him more is working harder and getting better results. So you actually owe it to your clients to charge a lot of money. And I know that may sound counterintuitive or you think Emily's greedy or whatever, but if that's the feeling you're having right now, you got to check your own money mindset because really we can all experience this abundance. And again, you're not helping anyone by staying broke. So really focus outwards, focus out with generosity, focus out with being of service and know that in order for you to be the best coach possible, you've got to be treating yourself, taking care of yourself Um, taking care of your body and all of that. Brilliant. Love it. Got a question that I ask all of my guests. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. What's your definition of adventure? Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's such a good question. My definition of adventure is really following the whims of your heart and soul, being spontaneous, and not letting anything get in the way of the thing that you want to do. Love it. Thank you. Emily, what's the best place for people to find you online? Um, The best place to find me is just my website, emilyutter.com. And that's Emily Utter, U-T-T-E-R is how you spell my name. It's like butter with no B. Um, That's the best place to find me. And then Derek, I can give you a link that you can share or post. Um, That's a link to my free sales script for coaches. So if you have no clue what the heck to say when you get on the phone with somebody, don't worry, I've got you covered. I have a free script that tells you what to actually say when you get on the phone with someone so you can help them. Perfect. We will have that linked in the show notes at DerekLaudermilk.com. Emily, thank you so much. Great to reconnect with you. It's been really fun chatting with you today. So thanks. Thank you, Derek. This has been super fun for me and it really great to um, have this opportunity. So thank you so much. Perfect. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. All right. I hope you enjoyed that one with Emily Utter. She's got so much energy. She's amazing. Awesome girl. And hopefully you got some actionable things to, to take away, especially if you are a coach and doing sales calls. And uh, it definitely helped me with with calls with potential clients and getting conviction around my offer and, you know, just structuring the coaching that I do. Speaking of the coaching that I do, if you are interested in starting a business that you can take anywhere in the world, that is what I help people with. So you can get a free 30-minute strategy session with me. All you have to do is head over to DerekLaudermilk.com slash coaching and sign up 
or drop me an email, derek at derekloudermilk.com. What was your biggest takeaway from this episode today? If you leave your answer in a review in iTunes, first of all, that helps that helps keep the show up in the rankings and helps other people find out about it. So it is doing a good service for everyone. But you will also be entered for a chance to win, and we'll do this every month, free lifetime membership in the community for adventurous entrepreneurs, where you can learn all kinds of master classes about entrepreneurship that's normally six hundred dollars a year so we'd love for you to leave a comment and support the show and your chance to win membership thanks so much for listening now it's your turn to go out there and be adventurous